Cost of living relief could be on the cards for many Australians. Earlier this week, the Australian energy regulator announced that power prices would fall for the first time in two years from July 1. But what does that actually mean for power bills? Joining me now is independent MP Di Lee. Good to see you. So the coalition has taken aim at Anthony Albanese, who promised a $275 cut to power bills at the last election. But the coalition says he's presided over a $750 a year increase for households. Are power prices a big issue in Western Sydney? You're the member for Fowler. And do they blame the government for it? Uh, look, absolutely. I think I've been saying, the, uh, I've been raising the issue in terms of uh, electricity price rise, uh, many, uh, you know, petrol fuel, uh, fuel as well, grocery price rise, and, and that's impacting uh, our community in Fowler. And I have no doubt Australians uh, overall as well are really feeling the pains of, of uh, the rise in electricity prices. And you have to think, um, wholesale prices, my understanding, has gone down, and yet that hasn't passed on to our con consumers or, or the public. I, I had a uh, Bring Your Bill Day event last week in my Fowler electorate. Over 100 people attended. And um, everybody brought their bills along. And everybody's telling us that their electricity bills has just gone up so much. Uh, in one instance, somebody had brought in a $2,500 electricity bill. And that day, their bill was going to be, uh, their power was going to be cut off. But we were able to assist. Uh, through the, uh, you know, um, E1, which is the Energy Water Ombudsman, was there to able to assist to kind of not get the power cut off. Mm. So this is just a huge issue um, in Fowler, from my perspective, in Western Sydney, but I have no doubt in many other um, electorates across the country. So really the government has to do something to address this continual rise in electricity prices. And I think that whole push um, for... for net zero is impacting that and you know, the government has to take responsibility. Well, Labor is claiming credit for a proposed small fall in power prices for one in 10 New South Wales households and businesses next financial year with the biggest reduction to be around 10%, but most will be saving less than 3%, nowhere near the $275 cut promise. What's your reaction to the government's talk at the moment about power prices? I don't believe it. Do you think... If people look at their electricity uh, bills, I don't believe that they can actually see the, the, the decrease in the electricity prices. Um, I know, for instance, a local business, his electricity prices went from $4,000 in, uh, I think, September last year to this year in April, uh, sorry, this year, um, early this year, to about 11000 from 4000 to 11000 for a small business, mind you. Um, and so, and my understanding as well is some of the energy retailers, and I would ask your audience to check this out, apparently they're changing from um, billing you every three months to billing you every month in order to show that there is a lesser amount to charge you. But... Uh, look, I, I don't believe that it's going to really go down. Maybe it's not going to increase as much as it has been, but there's been no, um, you know, s uh, rebate or any kind of support um, to provide for, especially for working Australians. Uh, honestly, Australians, working Australians are struggling with the cost of living and we need to really, you know, be honest about that. How do we people pay for their bills, not just the electricity bills, their gas bills, their insurance insurance bills, and rent and, and grocery um, prices as well. So it's out there on the ground and the grassroots level, especially where I am, we're feeling the pain. OK. I just want to ask you about another thing. Um, the federal government is facing more questions over record immigration numbers. New figures show another 150,000 migrants entering the country that's putting current forecasts at risk. Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill has suggested the government would start issuing warning notices to high-risk education providers that have become, quote-unquote, visa factories. Should the government be doing more to slow the rate of arrivals until we figure out where everyone's going to live? Uh, can I first first say that I'm not uh, against immigration, and I think you know there is uh, we need to bring uh, people in uh, because you know we, we've got an aging population. However, sa saying that, I believe that migration has to be done in a planned and managed way because at the moment uh, we don't have enough housing. Uh, uh, jobs uh, in, in terms of the population growth are mainly in areas like Western Sydney in Fowler. Uh, we've had, we've seen about 10,000 
people resettled there over the last five years out of the 12,000 refugees that came to Australia, for instance. Now, that 10,000 people, we welcome migrants, we welcome uh, settlement of refugees. I, I was a former refugee, so I, I appreciate that. But we need to understand that we have to have the infrastructure, we have to have services, we have to ensure that people are brought in and are set up to succeed. And not just, just to be dumped in an area like, say, in, in, in Fairfield or, uh, or Liverpool. That's where a lot of the settlement has been. So mm. I think that, um, and, 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 you know, it's good that the government is pointing out of this, the, the factory where they're generating, you know, visas for bringing people in. Yes, we have to put a stop to that because we have to manage our migration system so that way areas like Fairfield do not get burdened with having to look after uh, and provide for uh, newly arrived migrants with not enough infrastructure in place for them. Just quickly, Dailia, we're running out of time, but the government will introduce new laws to Parliament today, making it illegal to sell vapes unless it's for medical reasons. Do you support the government on this? Yes, look, I do. Uh, but look, I, I, I suppose for me, banning anything is dangerous because it'll just go underground. However, yeah. vaping and the young people in our community have said to me that it is very dangerous and it's impact health. So it is a, a legislation that I, I definitely am supporting the government on. Thank you so much for your time today. Dai Lee, thank you.